Hey, hardcore list, hardcore honey listeners! Got a new episode this week. We got Jade as usual, and then we got another great guest today helping us out. We got Paul. Got anything to say for us, Paul, to start off the show this week? A little something about us, a little bit. Well, thank you for having me. I, I enjoy the show. I've li- I've I've watched it uh, quite a few times, uh, so I'm interested to uh, to see what we have today. Okay, perfect. That's awesome. So we'll just go right to it. Episode today, um, I think it's going to be kind of a running part for the next few weeks right now. The documentary everyone's talking about, The Last Dance, Chicago Bulls. Um, so how many times have you guys watched it? Jade? I've watched it twice. you watched it twice? Yeah. Well, how many times have you? Just yeah. once, twice? Yeah. Me too, twice so far. Twice? E- each one, though. Yep. So, yeah, yeah I, got, I got three under my belt. But the last one, I kind of, I don't know how much I actually paid attention to. It was more background stuff as I was doing laundry. But, yeah, it was on three times, I'll say. It was on three times, watched two and a half of it. Um, but, okay. So, one uh, first thing I want to point out with this, and I don't know if you guys uh, noticed it. One thing that I really liked just with the documentary itself was how it was set up and how it would go from the last year and yeah. then to the beginning and bouncing back and forth. Right. And I thought it tell, told uh, it's going to help tell a little bit of a different story to it since you're seeing both at the same time instead of just one gradual thing. Paul, do you see something? Um, is that something that intrigues you with it too, or is it just something that I noticed? Yeah, you know, um, I'll be honest with you. When I watch a movie or something, I, I never really like that going back kind of a thing. Um, I'm more of a stay on the thing and go. But for this, it really does. Uh, help out because it lets you uh, bring back a little bit of what what they're talking about let you remember it give you a little bit to go off of and maybe for some people who haven't seen it I've been watching it with my son and who wasn't around then you know it helps give them the context too so it it has really been good for for this for this documentary anyway yeah and uh, Jade how about yourself was that um, giving you has it given you another insight or another outlook to the uh to the documentary? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a really smart way to do it because we know that the majority of the footage was filmed during that last championship season, but, and there's a lot of footage from the indications, but being able to go back and and start at the beginning of his career and add those bits in, it's a really nice way to break it up because otherwise it was just going to be that one last season. So it's going to give a much more rounded out picture of everything this way. Yeah, because for me at least, I knew a lot of the 90s stuff. But like Mm -hmm. once you're in those early 80s and stuff, I didn't know Jordan even broke his foot like that. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't know that either. That was so this that was something that for me so far, that's even flipped the script even more with me with with how I view this Chicago Bulls team. Mm -hmm. Uh, What? I remember that really well, actually. Uh, that was a hard season to get through because he gave us the first one, and then you're like, you're like ready for it, you know. And then mm-hmm. then, then he goes down, and you're like, oh. And it it, it it seemed like it just went forever, you know. Forever. Oh yeah. So I, it must have been interesting seeing then that it felt like he was gone forever, but he still rushed himself back. Oh back. yeah, and I couldn't believe that watching that like that. Could you see that today? No, oh never. god no <laughs> uh-uh. we'll have players sitting out longer than needed so they can be ready exactly and now this guy's rushing it that whole other mentality exactly but i thought he made a good point that he knows his body and this is something i talk to to people about when it comes to sports players and injuries all the time more on the side of especially with Kawhi being in toronto last year and how he left san antonio was, you know, the doctors are telling him, you're fine to play, you're fine to play. And he's like, like, well, I know my body better than you do. And he stuck to his guns, right? So kind of the same thing, just on the other side. Michael knew he he was good to go. He knew he was fine. And he wasn't going to let anybody else tell him otherwise. Um, My quick thing was, 
did when he said he went back to school to North Carolina, I, did he actually meet besides just going there to train? Did he actually go back to classes or was it just going to train and rehab? Did you, did you guys figure that I out? Or that just I didn't feel like that was completely clear, but I would guess based on his mom saying how important education was that he would have probably been in glasses. That would be my educated mm. guess. That's what I was thinking, because as much as of a star he was, I don't think North Carolina would just let him practice there every single day. It's like, no, no, yeah. no, we have our own thing going on with stuff. You, know you what... were great, but you're in the NBA now. We're a, we're a whole new season. You know what's Two crazy seasons. is it was so such a secret because we didn't have the social media, all that kind of stuff. And to think that they uh, kept that like that. I mean, I had no idea he was playing, you know, watching that and seeing that part. It was like, you got to be kidding me. You know, he, he actually went back and then was playing. Now I do remember that he had the, the, one of the first guys to next to magic. And then we had the, the love of the game clause in their contracts. So they were allowed to play on a court of their choosing, but to think of that now, a guy going back and, you know, playing when he's on injured reserve, and that's some crazy, crazy stuff. I think if Kawhi, when he was sitting himself out, was going back to, uh, I think he went to San Diego State or something like that, thinking of him mm -hmm. going back to mm -hmm. college while Spurs are like, um, <laughs> like you said, you weren't healthy enough to play right <laughs> exactly. now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that really intriguing. I also didn't know how bad the Bulls were at the time. Like oh, when they course. mentioned the traveling, <laughs> oh yeah, co traveling cocaine cir circus or whatever with the Bulls. That I, I, even though that that phrase came up in the first episode, I feel like that's going to be the phrase of the entire documentary. <laughs> oh yeah, that one stuck with like, yeah. like I don't remember it exactly what it said. That's still like when you saw him react to it. Jordan react to it and just bursts out laughing with it. Yeah, yeah. His, his whole face was was classic right there. And yeah. how, but, so he mentions that one night in the hotel where he ran into all his teammates doing that stuff. Um, how much do you believe that Jordan didn't partake in that, Jade? I believe it because I I see his black mama and she would have kicked his butt. <laughs> I hundred percent believe it. You, Okay. What What about you, Paul? What about you? I I do only because I remember like uh, his, the whole family thing and his dad and how strong his dad was to him at the time, and just it seemed like um, every time you saw like an interview with him when he was young, like that in college or whatever, he seemed like that guy who was straight. You know what I mean? Like the kid mm -hmm. that was that was taught to go straight to be straight. Now. The whole, you know, being the rookie walking in, and, and I mean, you know, maybe they gave it a little bit of a of a of a edge towards Jordan there, but but mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think he 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 partaked. I wouldn't say he didn't stay around and you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, enjoy the the time or whatever. But uh, yeah, I don't think he done none of that other stuff. Okay, okay. I was just curious with that, just because just. Knowing his personality, like maybe he, he has this competitive edge. And maybe something came out with it, but <laughs> well, and I, but I think his competitive edge might have been why he didn't, though, because he was focused. He was so focused on basketball, so, and he, could do more. he didn't want to mess that up. He knew that was his ticket. He couldn't. Um, young Michael Jordan could not play in the league today. In the fact where if he was getting drafted young. He's going to a bad team. They're still kind of in a lose mode to rebuild. The tanking is the big thing in the league now. Yeah. He did. He that's if there's one thing that would hold Jordan back in this yeah. era's game. Is he would, that he can't he doesn't have the mentality losing. Those yeah. are the two things that he wouldn't want to be a part of. Yeah, that like and, and it's not even like he wouldn't want to. He would refuse to be a part of that. Like, I don't care what you guys all have, have decided. I'm going to play to win. That's <laughs> yeah. it. Well, I mean, if you look at the first year he was in there, I mean, it, that's basically what it was. There were four guys running around and Mike getting the ball and scoring, you know. I mean, it was yeah. – they didn't have a, a a want to win, you know, or anything like that at that time. So he was doing yeah. it all because he didn't want to lose. So he's running around doing everything at that time. And, it, you know – that really stood out to me too that the end of that game where he was like 
the game's not over and his team had given up. Yeah, it's still a full like, quarter, only down nine. Yeah. yeah, that's a thing in in today's NBA that you talk about, guys that are willing to play the whole game regardless. Mm-hmm. And so it's crazy to think yeah. about the rest of a team going, yeah, we're done with a quarter left to play. Like, Well, especially <laughs> yeah. since, like, for me, the 80s mentality of just, oh, like, never backing down and stuff, yeah. that's what kind of surprised me hearing that, okay, this is definitely a weaker team. If in the 80s they're... There's still 12 minutes of the game, and they're already like, mm, yeah, they, what they, they have no the one guys. to at all. Yeah. And did I see George Gervin on that Bulls team in like little clips, or was that just me with that? I George th- the Iceman Gervin was. I he, believe the Iceman was there at the end. Yeah, I mean at was, the end of his I, years. I, yeah. I thought it was. I was like that mustache and those long arms. That looks. <laughs> <laughs> that's the him. finger roll. <laughs> okay, that's what. Just wanted to make sure with that. Because uh, it was it was bugging me a little bit with it, um, uh, but one thing that I want I wanted to also bring up is since it revolves around the first trips, Jerry Krause. He's the he's one of the main focal points with it. Jay, did you know much about Jerry Krause as a person before going into the documentary? I might not even have known Jerry Krause's name, honestly, before going into the documentary. Because my focus on basketball had very little to do with execs at the time that that was all going on. It was really, I really was just watching games. That's, and that's fair. I mean, you are also a Detroit Pistons fan at this time. (laughs) You're not going to be caring about your one rival's uh, front office. Exactly. And what what about you, Paul? Where... Jerry Krause was a little bit more on your radar before the documentary. Yeah, but like I said before, I had the image of him at the time as this genius. I mean, it was that's how he was portrayed. That's how it was given. I mean, you've seen Scottie Pippen come along. You know, then you've seen it get built the way it was. And you were like, this guy just knows what he's doing. And, and you never got that behind the scene look of Jordan making fun of him. And, I mean, I guess if you look at it back now and see some of those interviews, maybe now we could take it as, oh, that's what that was. But at the time, yeah. it was just Jordan talking, you know. And mm-hmm. and, and yeah. so, so yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't realize the kind of a, and, and I hate to put it this way, but creepy creepy kind of guy that he, that he really was. <laughs> he really is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to have to say that, but, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, no, yeah, he's, he seemed like kind of a creepy guy just by just appearance wise. It, like, <laughs> like we're finding but, out new things about him, but like, yeah, like, and not even just creepy. Cause like you can be creepy and be pretty easy to dismiss, but he <laughs> yeah. was creepy and un- he's inherently unlikable. Something about him. Uh, yeah. Border, just, borderline like, James Dolan, borderline James yeah. Dolan. <laughs> Some, Yeah. Like if that, he was that an guy. owner, he would be James Dolan. If he was an owner. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. He's a guy that's at least, insane. At least he knows organizations. Basketball. At least he knew basketball. That's true. He had that over James Dolan, at least. He true. Did. He did have that. He did have good knowledge of sports in general, being yeah. baseball to the to basketball. Yeah, I was going to say, he was Chicago White Sox, right? Yeah, he did a real yeah. good job there, too. Okay. Well, yeah, because... I didn't think that it was, I thought this documentary going into it was just going to be like the saga that led up to the final one. I didn't think about the drama that was going on behind that. Um, yeah. Paul, like when you were watching this Bulls squad, did did the media ever kind of point out this kind of bumpy relationship as in depth with Jerry Krause and with the rest of the team? Because for a good chunk of it, it seemed like he had some tensions for almost the entire time with one person or another. Yeah, and like for that part, no, like especially with Michael Jordan because you figured they were on the same uh, wavelength from the get-go. So that was a little bit of a surprise. But when the Tony Kukoc situation arose and it was told by Krause that, that we all, you know, we knew all around that they were looking at this guy because we started getting like a, a games from overseas, you know, on ESPN of, of Ku Coach mm-hmm. playing, you know, and you, because he was this big European star that was going to come to join the Bulls, you know. And when that happened, that's all we did. And then you, you could see the tensions right there because he made it public, you know, about 
were going to shut him down when they went to the Olympics and, mm-hmm. and, and that sort of thing. So in that time frame, we could see that. Um, and a little bit of Pippin's contract, but I'll be honest with you at the time, I, I thought of Pippin as being that kind of a, uh, uh, <laughs> I hate to say it, but that kind of a whiny guy anyway, you know, so you kind of just thought that was Pippin at the time, you know? See, that's interesting to me because that's the same way I felt about Pippin in the documentary talking about his contract. Whiny was exactly the word that I used. Yeah, he, he, and I compared it to when DeMar DeRozan got traded from Toronto. It was whiny. Yeah. And for a couple of reasons with Pippin. One, for the contract. First of all, you made your decisions about your contract. You decided you couldn't afford right. to risk the money. So that you could help your family, so you took it. Right. But not being able to, willing to renegotiate it. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I totally agree mm-hmm. with. Um, shoot, what was the the president Chicago's president's name? Starts with an R. Reisendorf. Yes. That's the owner. Yeah, okay. he, he warned him that it wasn't a good contract before he signed it. And that's the person who has arguably the most to gain by getting players on not player-friendly contracts. And he still was enough of a stand-up guy to say, look, Scotty, I don't think this is a good deal for you. And he signed it anyways. So I totally agree with him in saying, I don't want to, you signed it, I don't want to hear about it again. I don't know. Just, it was 91 he had... He signed that contract, correct? I think so. Yeah, right okay. before the one of the biggest upgrades of uh, contracts by the NBA, too. I mean, they were coming into a negotiation themselves. It was ended up being astronomical for the NBA, so salaries went booming at that time. And he was still stuck on that old contract, so that hurt that much more seeing everybody yeah. else there were players coming in that were getting the, something close to him you know having a you know just coming out of college so yeah and like when they broke down the numbers it looked pretty bad like he was all the all the records he held on the bulls for his stats and yeah. then he was i think it was 122nd highest paid player in the nba so yeah obviously he, he was worth more money but i still go back to that thing that Reisendorf said, don't sign the deal for this long, because then he would have had a, an opportunity to renegotiate his contract within the new collective bargaining agreement right. and get paid. Right. My thing I'm just so surprised with is the contract itself, what they offered. The He came off, he was coming off of his, so his first NBA All-Star selection was a 90. Mm-hmm. And so 91, he has another one too, and he only gets that kind of deal. And this is when they're starting to win. They're getting the Eastern Conference Finals. They're finally getting the titles. So I'm curious on why they lowballed him so much with that. I'm curious on why his agent didn't do his job. That's the other thing, too. Like, at the end of the day, that's it's the agent's job to get the best deal. The agent gets paid based on what the player makes. So... I, it, like, if it had been me in that situation, if I was, if I looked at the numbers and said, this isn't enough... I would have said, either do better or I'm going to fire you. But again, it comes back to the fact that Pippen was fine with the number at the time. Yeah, and right? It was all in hindsight that he was pissy about it. Well, here's another thing, too. You being a Pistons fan at the time, you, you understand how in the beginning, it, when those series with the Pistons, how they demoralized Pippen. And yeah. you could see everything in him. And for... For fans, we took that as him. So it's, it was hard to ever get that image of that of that getting beat up Scottie Pippen over and over where he'd have Jordan in his face even too telling him, you know, get stronger, you know. we got Now he did, and he did eventually get stronger. But when those first ones did, so I think that contract and all that, when he started whining about, we think of, of Scottie the whining, getting knocked down, you know, as a fan at that time. So he wasn't really like a backing Scottie Pippen at the time going, yeah, he should get more money. You know, he's that good of a player to, to most of those fans. It was like, yeah, he's good, but you know, 
<laughs> you could have a lot of other people step in and exactly yeah. pull up the do the exact same thing. No, I'm not trying to. I'm not. Try, don't don't get me wrong. I think Scottie Pippen was a great player. Uh, I mean, oh. really great player. Okay, I mean, oh, oh better than most. But I'm yeah. talking about at that beginning stages when he was going through that thingy. That was kind of just the image that, no, oh, yeah. as a fan, that that we took from that. And even the year when he when Jordan left, I mean, what happened that year? You know, um, Pippen was <laughs> like almost reverted back to the beginning. You know, so I think that whole yeah. Pippen needed Jordan, Jordan needed Pippen thing really. It's true. Really is true. Yeah. Yeah, because it was it, that's an interesting point for me because working on that thirty and thirty series we're doing um, in the hoops department at Belly Up, I'm doing highlight videos for each all time starting five, and I did the Bulls one this week. And watching the highlights of Scottie Pippen, it was like, damn, like I forgot oh, yeah. how good he was. And I, I'm watching these highlights. And I'm like, if he had been playing with anyone else other than Jordan and doing that stuff. He would have been the first first name out of everyone's mouth. But then on the other hand, and I've always thought this, Scottie Pippen, that as we know him, never becomes that Scottie Pippen without playing with Jordan. Exactly. I believe that 100%. How many, so then just, how many titles would say Pippen wasn't there? How many titles Jordan wins? Because he's still going to win. Mm. How many, though? Mm. I don't think it's six. What do you think? I don't think it's six. Mm. That's that's a tough one because um, once he became the Scottie Pippen that we now know, I mean, when he when he grew into that boy, he was a big part of those those titles. He was a yeah. big part of those titles. So I mean, I I, I I would still go three because it's Jordan. You know, I'd say at least yeah. three to four because he is Jordan. And they did get other players. They had a you know they had great shooters. They always had a great shooter on that side. I mean, they did. Don't forget Craig Hodges, which they don't even mention. And that guy, I mean, he's the only NBA champ who came back to to defend his three point shootout with an NBA jersey on. You know, he wasn't even in the game at the sad that was. Really, I did not know about that one. I, yeah, I knew Craig Hodges was a lights out shooter and he won a three point contest, but I didn't know that he defended his title. Yeah, he, he, he was out of the league, and and but because he was the reigning champ, they let him come back, and he just wore an, it said NBA across it instead of his team jersey. It just said NBA on it. Perfect, I yeah. love it. Nice, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I think he came in second or something like that too. He he still almost won. <laughs> Nice. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh wow, that that's fun. Um, but in the center of it all, Phil Jackson, he is the mind that made this team play well. Um, Paul, with the Kraus Jackson relationship, do you think um, if there wasn't that tension with each other, do you think they would have? Uh, would there have been much of a success? Because there was almost a competition between them, or at least in Krause's eyes, mm-hmm. on who could get I mean, more of the, who could be more of the success, who could be. I could see how that would. I could see how that would fuel it a little bit, but at the same time, uh, Phil Jackson himself was 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 a very competitive uh, uh, individual himself. When he played with the Knicks, he was a crazy guy, you know. Um, and, and then his, uh, uh, just his whole, uh, I mean, the, the mental way he took the game, um, making them read a book, you know, they always had to have a book. Everybody, you know, always had a book in their hands. Um, those kind of things. I mean, he was built for that, you know, he was just built to do what he did. Uh, I think he proved that going to the Lakers where I was waiting for that to be a disaster, you know, and then, then. When he went there and you know then took Shaq and Kobe, which again, I mean, how how, how not too hard there with Shaq and Kobe, but but <laughs> the way that he still did that too, it was the same way, methodical way. The I mean, I think he could have done it any anyway. And uh, speaking of like the Bill Jackson Lakers too, so Bill Jackson considered one of the greatest coaches. Would he be con- so? He's had the two greatest duos, arguably. For both of his for sure. ti- for most of his titles, are <laughs> yeah. where do those titles then kind of sit then? Because I mean, 
you have Michael Jordan, just the greatest player in general all time, you're going to get a lot. And then you get Kobe Bryant and then Shaquille O'Neal, one of the most dominant big men ever. We know, Jade, how you feel about that, lack of moves and stuff, but nonetheless, <laughs> he was still dominant. How how can you get the as much credit for the title, or how much credit do you give those titles, Jade, when you look at the talent that he had coached? Yeah. That he already had. Like, yeah, with, like, with Jordan. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could quantify where I would place those titles. What I would say is that any title that came from a team that didn't have superstar duos or big threes will always be kind of a harder one title, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So that Pistons team in the 2000s, the Mavericks team, mm. when they won their first title, those kinds of teams mm. are, they had to do it, they had to get to that final destination through a harder journey so that's the i would say that's almost the ultimate team yeah team ball just because yes you have the one player where you have to have like you have you need a go-to guy you just do just to play in general but then when you have everyone else on the team that just they know their role they stick to it they get great at it they don't try to go outside that's where i think that's when best coaching comes in where you can just keep on cycling, re, uh, cycling through players, and if they just know their what they have to do and just focus on right. it. Right. And was that a Phil Jackson thing with that, or was that a player thing for well, so Paul? Well, see, the thing too about Phil was he was just a a uh, uh, how do you say it? He knew how to make those talents work together to control the egos of all of those people. And maybe that was more than the coaching itself, because when you have two superstars on um, like he had that basically were coaches on the floor. I mean, Kobe's a coach on the floor. Jordan was a coach on the floor. Maybe maybe it was his greatness was keeping all of that together. That was probably his best, his greatest attribute as a coach was being able to handle all of that and make sure it didn't go. I mean, because look at those Bulls. They were like superstars. I mean, I can remember that. I, w- I would go to the Bulls game every year in Denver. You know, they came once a year. I was there each time, and it was like nothing you ever seen. You know, it was like going to a concert. It wasn't like going to a basketball game. You know, at that time, yeah. basketball games were kind of uh, uh, <laughs> a little bit boring to go to. You know, they were still, you know. But when the Bulls came, oh, no. I mean, it was it was like Ever, a, the whole know, circus came to yeah, town. Yeah, like you, you had fun. You know, they brought out the games. You did all of this stuff, you know, outside of the stadium even, and you know, and all for a regular season game, you know. Um, so, yeah. Oh, shoot. I had another thing about uh, Phil that I was actually going to ask. Oh, well, hopefully it'll come back to me later. Um, one thing that I – another thing that I saw the documentary, it was funny when they were interviewing all the different other people, um, was when they got to Obama. Instead of saying former <laughs> President Obama, it just said former Chicago resident. Resident, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's it was similar for Bill Clinton, too. Living in Chicago. Yeah, was like, Arkansas resident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure they are. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I'm not wrong with it, but that's not what I think about right away. Yeah. Just a guy I down the street. About was this just them trying to downplay, like, no, this is about the Bulls. This isn't about former presidents being on documentaries. <laughs> but, so, with... Uh, going back with the um, contract situation, so like I said, six other players were making more than Scotty. Um, well, just on that team, so Jordan was number one, obviously, $33 million that year. The next one up was Tony Kukoc mm. with four and a half. Both mm-hmm. Ron and him and Don, Dennis Rodman had uh, four and a half mil. So just that mm. massive drop-off. Ron Harper. Mm-hmm. Itself alone is... Is pretty funny, just considering. Did, was there a cap at that point in the NBA? A salary cap? I don't think there was. Was Jade? Do you I know? Don't know? I'm not sure. I feel like there wasn't. I feel like that came later. Let's check. I'm trying to remember because I can remember Jordan signing some like ob- obnoxiously high one-year deals at the end of his terms there. Um, 
that I don't know what happened today. They were like 50 million, <laughs> you know, for the oh, year. Goodness. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, 84, 85 was the first season where the, or the season that came back with it. Really? So, huh. So must there was been, a cap. The cap was, must have been very, very low. Very, very loose. <laughs> yeah, you look at Jordan's salary then, like, that's like, I mean, Steven Adams is almost getting that contract. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. He hasn't, I mean, I love the guy as a player, but he, he's getting 25 and Jordan was getting 33. Hmm. How yeah. times have changed with that. Yes, sir. Uh, so, I one thing that I, they haven't even got to Dennis Rodman yet. Oh, I know, man. there's so much they haven't got to. They yeah. haven't got to the Pistons. Yeah, the Pistons they have to talk about. And then... I'm sure they're going to mention something about the Dream Team, too. Oh, yeah. Um, then, like, Def Rodman. And then the two years when Michael Jordan was actually filming for Space Jam, not playing baseball, it was really... Yeah, Paul, I don't know if you know this. Uh, Jordan's actually 18-month hiatus was so he could film Space Jam. <laughs> Wasn't to play baseball. Baseball was just so the storyline of Space Jam could begin. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's, yeah, it's not gambling problems, not baseball. It's because of Warner Brothers. He had to play with Looney Tunes. But <laughs> that conspiracy theory episode we did is never going away, is it? Because <laughs> I was so happy that you guys said yes for me to do it. I was like, oh no. Oh. They made their first mistake as a podcast. Yeah. Let Taylor talk about the conspiracy. <laughs> oh, man, you don't even know the half of it, too. When that was going on, I mean, you would literally get. Could, could could get beat up outside if you said something like that. You know, one of those conspiracy things at that time. And, oh, Jordan, no, he got caught gambling. What? You can't say. You know, you you know, exactly. it started you fights back then. You were him. like, all right, I, that's just what I heard. You know, it's just what I heard. But but yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then there's me. I'm 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 making up real low rent ones just to cover up the ones that are actually like important or serious. I'm like, no, it's Space Jam. No, it's not gambling problems. This space jam totally is. Yeah. Well, I, well worth it if it was. Come on, that's that's uh, you know my favorite oh, yeah, classic we, basketball oh, yeah. movie right there. I still give it to my son right now today. He he loves that show. You know. Huh? Oh, it's a, it's it holds up. Yeah. It's a classic to this day. Uh, we, yeah, we we had a discussion about that a couple episodes again too. Yeah, yeah, with our movie episode. Yeah. <laughs> that's. That is there isn't anything great. you guys don't cover, huh? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, right now, there's no basketball on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just try to pump out as much content yeah. of stuff we can come up with. Come so on, we had to dig deep. Appetite. This Jordan, this this Jordan documentary is saving us for weeks. <laughs> you, you didn't like that horse competition? Come on, man! That had me on the <laughs> edge of the seat right there. You know, <laughs> I was boy. I was... <laughs> So, Jane, you've been getting it on Netflix? Yeah. So it's the day after. Well, yeah. I mean, that's nice at least because then you can, like, for me, luckily enough, I have my ESPN cable right now. But if you don't have cable, you can't watch this right now. Yeah. No. Then mm. that, I think, is, and considering it's made with Netflix, I'm curious on why it's not on Netflix now yet in the U.S., I think it's yeah. probably it's probably the terms of the deal with ESPN. Oh, to wait ESPN for it. ESPN probably demanded to have it, only have it in the states, that would and then Netflix sense. got the distribution rights for the rest of the world. Yeah. Do you think once the uh, documentaries, like the docu series, is over, they'll just push it back on t- all of it onto Netflix? It depends. Does ESPN have an on-demand on-demand streaming platform? Well, they have ESPN, ESPN Plus. Plus. Yeah. But since Netflix still has their hand in it, I feel like, hopefully at least, they'll put it onto Netflix because then it can reach that larger audience that doesn't have ESPN. Yeah. Because one thing I, I think, saw... Um, yeah, I think that would be the smart bet. But yeah. again, it depends on what, the, what ESPN's terms were to be attached to it. Because... ESPN being attached to it, even though Netflix kills it at documentaries, because it's Jordan and it's the NBA, ESPN's name on it gives it some clout. Well, I'm curious if then that's going to lead it, since ESPN is owned by ABC, 
ABC yeah. is owned by Disney. Maybe it goes to Disney Plus. Disney Plus. That's true. Yeah. I hope it doesn't go to Disney Plus. I mean, you're I not going to get Disney Plus. Regardless, I have Disney Plus or Netflix. I, I mean, I'd rather it go to Netflix. But I mean, if it goes to Disney Plus, it goes to Disney Plus. I'll still watch it, no matter <laughs> exactly. what. Exactly. I still have the streaming service. It already has my money. Why am I complaining? <laughs> it already has my ten dollars a month. Oh, man. How many more streaming services do I need, Taylor? See, I cycle through them. I'll cancel Netflix for six months, and then I'll get Disney Plus. That's coming up. And then I'll cancel Disney Plus, and I'll have Amazon Prime, and then I'll cancel that, and I'll go back to Netflix. <laughs> I refuse to have more than one at a time because I can only watch one at a time. That's true. My family and I, we all just kind of pull it together. My parents own the Amazon Prime account. My sister yeah. owns the Disney Plus account. That's I own a, the Hulu and that's Netflix. That's how you do it account. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just hand it around like a hot potato. Yep. Yeah, that's smart. Pass the password. Yeah. Pass it yep, on. Yep, exactly. I'll get a text at eleven thirty. My sister will be like, I'm just setting up <laughs> yeah. a new T V. What's, the, What's password the password for Hulu again? <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. And I know my dad listens to this, so sorry, Dad, if I'm calling you out on this, but that's what happens. <laughs> for sure. And one thing that uh, came back to the uh, actual series, the documentary series. So my fiance living in Mexico, it's actually being, it's huge down there right now too. So nice. I'm, I'm amazed at just how important it has been. Cause on Twitter, it was when it came to the top 30 things trending on Sunday last week, 25 of it had 25 of the trending topics had to deal with the documentary itself. So, wow. Jade, where does this documentary, when it comes to just impact to basketball, where does this sit right now? So I ha actually thought about this before you asked, so I'm glad you asked that question. The fact that they pushed up the release date was brilliant oh, because yeah. they have an absolutely wrapped audience. There are a lot of people, I think, that was, if basketball was on right now, if basketball new play um new games were available would be like eh, i'll watch it when i get around to it but now because it's all these years they like it was the perfect storm all these years that they sat on the footage without putting the documentary together yeah. and then the fact that covid shut down sports Check and out. then the decision to move up the release date from whenever it was going to be, I think is going to make it bigger. Like, it was going to be big. Don't get me wrong. It was going to be big. But I think it's it's getting going to be bigger than it otherwise would have been if it hadn't been for all of those other parts coming together. Is it true that it uh, is Jordan who put that out? Was it in his vault where it was sitting, I heard? I don't know where it was sitting, but I do remember them saying, or no, I listened to part of um, Bill Simmons' podcast on mm. it this week. And what he said was the agreement between the NBA and Michael Jordan was, we're only going to use the footage if you agree to it, if we both agree to use it. Right. So I, 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 the way I understood it is that's part of the reason that it's taken this many years for it to become public. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't remember him saying exactly who had custody of the footage, well, just it, that they had to both agree to use it. It was smart of whoever it was, because like you said, it was the absolute perfect, perfect time. Yeah. Couldn't have asked Maybe for it was a locked in the Disney vault. <laughs> <laughs> we don't go to Disney Plus. It was locked in the Disney vault for all those years. <laughs> and now it came out again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's funny. And I heard that now, since with this document uh, documentary and it's saying, oh, yeah, well, they gave the last year footage and whatever. Um, I guess the last, I think it was two years or it might have been the last year of Kobe's career, they did the exact same thing. Oh. So are we thinking within the next few years something about Kobe comes out? Or I feel like because he has passed, it's. It's going to come out sooner than it would have otherwise. Oh, yeah. Like, on an anniversary. 
So of the crash. Well, how long so. do we not have sports? <laughs> because yeah. if we're dying also, for something more that, after this, then maybe it follows. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, the yeah, NBA, you know what? Maybe is op- the NBA is opening practice facilities at the end of May anywhere that the local government has lifted stay home. Uh, orders right so it might be sooner than we think fingers crossed yeah fingers crossed sort of that means everyone's also getting healthy so yeah fingers crossed that way too if everything gets close if sports comes back that means the world's coming back to normal everything's okay that's what that's how i'm viewing when sports comes back it's a little bit of a haven of like that means everything's okay now or it's getting better (laughs) it's getting there yeah it's getting yeah it's getting better a touch of normalcy (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, that. Yeah, that's very true. So, uh, going, swinging back to the document, what do you see coming forward through the rest of it, Paul? Like, what are you? What's the most part you're intrigued with for the next eight episodes? Oh, for one, I can't wait for tonight. I mean, the fun started when Dennis Rodman got there. That was like, especially if you was a Bulls fan, because you hated him. You know, he was the enemy. He was the one who knocked Pippen around. He was the one who did all that damage. And then all of a sudden, he's coming to your team. And then he had changed his personality by then anyway. So it was like, I mean, add that to this fire? Like, bring it on, you know? And and so (laughs) to see what was behind that we didn't get to see, because, you know, what we saw was, was wild enough, you know? So I'm anxious to see what we didn't get to see. And, uh, what what about you, Jay? What what's one thing that you're looking forward to now for the? I'm actually curious to see what they're going to gloss over. Are they mm. going to gloss over the possibility that he was suspended and didn't take those <laughs> oh, eighteen yeah. months off? Are they going to gloss over how close he is to R. Kelly? Because <laughs> I watched oh, that. No. I watched that series a couple weekends ago and I was like oh yeah they were really tight and then I looked into it more (laughs) and I realized all the way up to Jordan's 50th birthday party which was only seven years ago R. Kelly was at his 50th wow so I'm like (laughs) (laughs) I'm curious about how much of Mm. that stuff they're going to gloss over in favor of he was such an amazing basketball player. Right. <laughs> yeah, wow. at least you could say it's, it, it was. It was a moment. It was. It was just. It was just friends. It was friends. He he didn't have much to do with them. Uh, <laughs> that's the only, right? he like, gotta keep on doing backflips away from that one. That's the only way you can get with that. Well, and yeah. that's the thing that I thought was interesting because you had to know Jordan at least heard the rumors oh. of yeah. what was oh, going yeah. on. Yeah, I, I would hate to. That's, if that's not enough for somebody to say, you know what, I think I'm going to make some distance between myself and you. True. For Jordan not to have done that, and still all these years later, only seven years ago, to still have him performing at his 50th birthday party, like that, that to me has to say a little bit of something about Jordan as a person. Yeah, and how crushed, though, could a person like me be if I find out he's the one holding the camera for our camera? I mean, that would just be like, I mean, oh, this, 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 oh. Mike, Mike. What you- okay. There's there's a oh. whole other thing. That's not even last chance. That's a whole other spin-off documentary. Oh my that I am also waiting to see. That one's gonna have to be on HBO though. That <laughs> yeah, one's no gonna kidding. be on HBO. <laughs> that was not gonna be on Netflix. That's HBO <laughs> special right there. Late night oh. HBO Max. What do they call that now? The new <laughs> Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think don't well, when did they become friends? Because, like, if he became friends with R. Kelly after the I Believe I Can Fly, I just feel like Jordan's like, oh, yeah, he's singing to my <laughs> ego right now. That's why. Just, anyone that can oh, suck 100%. up to Jordan, he's probably like, yeah, I'm the greatest. Oh, God. Well, I Believe I Can Fly was written for Space Jam. Exactly. Like, it wasn't- exactly. Mm-hmm. It so he was up. At Space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it all began, right? That's where the it all Space began. Jam. Oh. See now you're killing Space Jam for me, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow! 
What a night. I still love don't, don't, tell your son, don't tell your son what I was saying today. Don't really? let him listen to that. You can't watch this now, no. Can't do Just bleep me over the entire time. That's as bad as saying there's no Santa. I mean, that's geez, <laughs> killing Space Jam. Oh. Oh, well, I think looking forward to these next two episodes tonight with it. Um, but For now, sure. I think we got a good grasp on the first two episodes. I um, think we can segue into our fast break time. Okay, first question. Jade, so far, what has been the most interesting thing you've learned? Most interesting thing I've learned is about that injury he had and how he decided himself that he was ready to go back regardless of what anyone else said. Like, after kind of watching, learning about his mentality, like, I've always said MJ is the GOAT. And I get into these arguments from time to time with people that think it's LeBron. But, like, I tweeted this this week and I said, if you can watch these first two episodes and still try and convince me that LeBron James is the GOAT and not sound like a dumbass, I'm interested to hear what that sounds like because I don't think it can be done. (laughs) So that's the most interesting to me, just, like, solidifying kind of what I already knew and seeing the details of just how driven and how um literally everything about that bulls team came down to him like the other guys played their parts but he was completely the driving force okay um same question then paul what was one of the so far the two episodes one was what was one of the more fascinating things that you learned um Basically, how creepy Jerry Krause was. I mean, <laughs> like I said, I thought of him as, as a basketball genius at the time. So seeing that, you kind of, I was kind of like watching it, kind of going, you know, it was like, wow, you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that and the uh, this the disarray that was there for so long. I, you know, again, I played it off as it was Jordan and they were joking, but to know that there was that big of a disarray for as long as there was but they could still continue to win like that. It's pretty incredible. Okay. Um, Next question. Um, Since we still haven't gotten too much on, like, the the dynasty, or, like, not the dice, the championship teams in in particular, uh, Jade, if you could pick out any of those teams so far, which one... What do you think would have been the best? Do we talk about the 72 and 10 team or do we talk about the next year or even that last year that they were able to go through all this turmoil and still pull out the title? See, I was thinking, I'm thinking the last year for two reasons. One, because of everything they got through, because usually teams that are that dysfunctional are not successful on the court. For sure. And if they make the playoffs, they don't have what it takes to get through even the first round. So that was really interesting. But also probably that last team because they had the most experience together. And because I do like basketball as a team sport, um, a team to me is better when they're able to play more seasons with kind of one core unit than when there's lots of changing in and out of personnel. All right. Um, Paul, same question. Which one of those six teams would you have probably said is your personal favorite, the best? I think for me, it was the one when he came back. The first championship that he won when he came back and he put on that 45. Um, Again, it was so crazy to at that time he was everything about basketball. I mean, I know there was magic, there was all the others, but like he had that 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 it. So when he was gone, you missed it. And then when he came back, man, the the it was up twice. So I think it was that first year when he came back out of baseball that that team right there was like that was crazy. It was a crazy. able to just to go right back into it right. and just been like, oh right yeah, back up. I was just stretching. Yep. Now I'm back. Yeah, and 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 the <laughs> downfall they had that year before, you know. And then to come right back to doing what they did was it was incredible. It was fun to watch too. 
Yeah, that just not like I said, not even skipping a step, and they just winning it again, <laughs> winning it again, like it happens, wow. right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay, so uh, final question for the fast break. So there's a couple different stages of Michael Jordan. You have the '80s Jordan, then you have that first set of title Jordan. You have the second set of Jordan, and then you have that Washington kid. I don't know what he was doing with the wizard. <laughs> Out of those four Jordans, Paul, which is your personal favorite Jordan? Probably the first one, actually. Uh, coming out of North Carolina and going to the Bulls, the 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 year that he came out, they did that uh, Olympic. The Olympics were that year, and they mm-hmm. played the Olymp the college all stars played the Olympic team in a, a pre game, pre Olympic kind of warm up thing, mm-hmm. and Jordan just beat the tail out of them. I mean, all those Olympians that were on that team, and I remember on the Sports Illustrated cover was him, you know, with, with that dunk in the tongue hanging out, you know, the first time you get to see that against the USA's Olympic team. And it was amazing. I mean, that whole time from him changing to that to that, that was just, it was incredible time of basketball. Like, I mean, King, I, I can say LeBron James is probably the only one it's had that kind of uh, same fanfare coming in like he did and have that thing mm-hmm. to be the mm-hmm. same. But yeah. Well, so, paper first one for me. And Jade, what do you have to say? I don't know if my favorite Jordan falls specifically into one of your four breakdowns, but for me it's whatever whenever he got to the point that he he did what he had to do to beat the Pistons. Mm. Cause without him going through that, mm. without him doing what it took to get his team past those bad boys. Be Jordan as we know it never happens. Are you telling Jordan me you know, today? Are you telling me the Pistons made what Jordan is today? Are you taking the credit <laughs> of all the hard work that Jordan said that put in? And you're like, no, yeah, my bad boys were the ones that made him Do, great. Does that sound I'm a little not. like Isaiah Thomas there? A little like uh, <laughs> Bill Lambeer? I mean, I, I'm just, just It was anything. us who did it. You know that, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. They made him, you know. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. Yeah. But now that you said it, without Jordan rules in those playoffs. Oh, well, forgot about that. Oh, yes. There was no such Jordan. thing as the Jordan rules, though, yes. Jade. <laughs> Bill Lambeer even said it himself. He's your favorite man. <laughs> Jordan rules. I don't know what you're talking about. What? I never said that. Gosh. <laughs> on that note anyway I do have one thing to add that we didn't get into that I thought was interesting because we always talk about James Dolan as being like the worst front office person in sports but <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the decision to not run it back after the last championship like that's a terrible decision and yeah, whatever it really resonated with me when Michael Jordan said we deserve the chance to defend it until we lose it. Yeah. And just because so, and it was interesting, Paul saying that at the time, um, Krauss was like this basketball genius, but how much of a genius can you be to say, Oh, by the way, three championships in a row, all the players still want to play here. The coach still wants to be here, but we're not going to do that. Yes. Hey, I can remember at that time saying that exact thing, though. I, I swear to you not. I can remember yeah. saying, what is he doing? Like, nobody gets rid of Jordan and Pippen. I mean, you don't break, break up that kind of a of a thing. Like, you just lost every kind of a, a credibility almost that you built up to that point. Now, yeah. kick out Phil Jackson. Kick out Michael Jordan. Can't, you know, <laughs> come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, of course, they, they don't get good again until... Uh, after he leaves. Yeah. yeah. So it took a couple of years after he left. There you go. But so we still got episodes three and four tonight. I am tomorrow for me. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry um, about that. Do you know oh, what? Yeah. Last week was so hard because I had to turn off the notifications on our Slack channel. I couldn't look at my phone Sunday night. I'm really annoyed I can't live tweet 
while everybody in the states is watching. Oh, it. I just said that I'm gonna tweet you. I'm gonna like I'm gonna like tape video. <laughs> I'm gonna tape little pieces <laughs> off of the off of the screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you. I did not think this through. <laughs> nope. Did or not. You're you gonna get like 50 notifications perfect. from me alone. You're gonna be like, what the hell? <laughs> Oh, my oh God. God. Well, <laughs> on that note, we will be here next week for the next two episodes, Breaking It Down. Paul, it was great having you on the show today. All right, I... um, always welcome to have you back. It was real great. Um, Jade here. You got me, TJ. Don't forget to follow us on Belly Up. Um, also on the Instagram and Twitter for that. I am now going to start set up that Instagram for Hardcore Honey, so follow that. <laughs> We also got the Twitter for it. Um, yeah. Unless you guys got some any right. final words, I think we're going to be signing out for the week. All right. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thanks for being on.